Hello everyone, very good evening and uh, now the exam is over and uh, you, I have received certain questions from uh, Anatomy uh, uh, from INISET uh, May 2023 and these are all uh, recall basis and uh, uh, let us discuss those questions and if you find any change in the language or change in the uh, language of the option or in the question, you please do let me know and then I will make those changes and let us now start with the recall questions. So this is one question where uh, either the fracture of the humerus was given already and uh, we were asked to mark the nerve which will be injured or maybe the features of nerve injury were given and we were asked to find that what is the uh, site of injury in this question, right? So either of two will be was in the question. But anyway, what is the concept that we need to know that there are certain nerves which are related to the which are related to the humerus, right? And we know that we uh, medial epicondyle, behind the medial epicondyle, we have, uh, behind the medial epicondyle, we have the ulnar nerve present. So in case of any injury over here, there will be ulnar nerve injury, or if any fracture is there involving the shaft of the humerus, then there will be radial nerve injury because behind this part, we know that uh, uh, radial nerve is passing through the radial groove. And around the surgical neck of the humerus, we have the axillary nerve present. So if at all any fracture over here, it will lead to the axillary nerve injury. And uh, you see, supracondylar fracture, it may lead to a median nerve injury. And also we need to know that lateral epicondyle, in front of lateral epicondyle, this is the part where the radial nerve will divide into two divisions, superficial and deep. Okay. So, uh, if the lateral epicondyle fracture is mentioned, then we may think in line of radial nerve injury. But as per this question, the answer will be ulnar nerve. Okay. And uh, this was one question. And let us look at the other question. This question was there like superior gluteal nerve will supply all except. Now, this is a, a number of times this question has been repeated over like, like in this topic, like Trendelenburg sign which nerve is supplying, which muscle is supplying, right? What is the name of the gate? Lot many questions have been asked number of times, right? So straightforward gluteal, uh, superior gluteal nerve, it is going to supply the gluteus medius, gluteus minimus, and also tensor facial letter, but not piriformis muscle. So that's why that will be the answer to this question. And uh, inferior gluteal nerve, uh, that is going to supply the gluteus maximus. Now, uh, let us look at this question, match the following pair, where we have been given certain nerves and certain actions. Uh, look at this part over here, like facial nerve, spinal accessory, these cranial nerves are given on one side, and the other side we have to match with the actions, right? So let us start here. We know that shrugging of the shoulder is done by trapezius muscle, and the trapezius muscle is supplied by uh, shrugging uh, that, uh, the trapezius muscle will be supplied by spinal accessory nerve. Okay, spinal accessory nerve also supplies sternocleidomastoid, but that has not been asked over here. And taste from anterior two third of tongue. It is actually carried by coda tympani. Okay, it is actually carried by coda tympani, and we know that coda tympani is a uh, coda tympani is a branch of the seventh nerve, facial nerve. So here, if I write. A will match with the this 2 because 2 is the spinal accessory nerve and this B will match with the, okay this B will match with the 1 over here okay taste from posterior one third of tongue straightforward ninth nerve okay and that will match with the 3 and chewing will match with the 4 because chewing is done by the uh, muscle of mastication which are supplied by the mandibular nerve. So among these, if you look at this way, we have the answer that is C. Okay, that will like, it will justify all this matching, right? Next question, this marking work, uh, this muscle was marked, this muscle was marked that is rhomboidius muscle, right? Rhomboidius muscle is there. So basically when we look at the back, right? And here we have the two major muscles, lower down we have latissimus dorsi and above we have the trapezius muscle. The trapezius being a trapezium shape or you can say one muscle if you take it is a triangular shape. And deep to the trapezius we have these muscles that is levator scapuli muscle is there. Okay, levator scapuli muscle is there rhomboidius minor muscle is there and rhomboidius major muscles are there but among these only uh, rhomboidius major was marked okay among these only rhomboidius major was marked 
Regarding the action, I'll tell you one mnemonic over here. Mnemonic means a trick you can say. When you talk about retraction of the scapula, it is done by rhomboidus. Okay, rhomboidus muscles will be doing the retraction along with trapezius middle fibers. Okay, trapezius middle fibers along with rhomboidus they do the retraction. Okay. Protraction, as we all know, it is done by the uh, serratus anterior, which is called as the boxer's muscle. Okay, so answer to this question will be retraction of the scapula along with the trapezius. A choice will be true. Other choices are not correct. Okay. Now moving on to the next question. This was asked: Which artery is involved in the lateral medullary syndrome? Those so features were given of the lateral medullary syndrome. Okay, and uh, if like you looking at this way. If they ask most common artery, then answer will be vertebral artery, direct as per Harrison. Otherwise, pica can also lead to lateral medullary syndrome. So, vertebral artery can be the answer to this question. Okay, and pica can also lead to lateral medullary syndrome. Okay, vertebral artery better answer than pica. Now this is the lateral part of the medulla. This is the lateral part of the medulla over here, where we have uh, like different nuclei present, right? We can see vestibular nucleus is present, inferior cerebellar peduncle is present. In fact, in the lateral medullary syndrome, nucleus ambiguous is also involved. Okay, vestibular nucleus involved, it will lead to nystagmus, vertigo, vomiting that we have been discussing in our class, the features and all. Inferior cerebellar peduncle will lead to the ataxia. Nucleus ambiguous, right? Nucleus ambiguous will lead to uh, the involvement of palate, pharynx, and larynx. And because of palate, pharynx, and larynx is involved, there, there will be different type of features can be given, right? And uh, in case of lateral medullary syndrome, also there is involvement of spinal nucleus of trisaminal and the spinal lambdiscus. So spinal nucleus of trisaminal means ipsilateral loss of pain and temperature from the face. But spinal lambdiscus gone means contralateral loss of pain and temperature from the body. Okay, so this is where we will get lateral medullary syndrome in the lateral part of the medulla, and in the medial part of the medulla we have this medial medullary syndrome. In case of medial medullary syndrome, there will be uh, like hypoglossal nerve injury, there will be medial lambdiscus, and there will be pyramidal tract involvement will be also there. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> looking at the next question here, this uh, question was given that anterior relations of the duodenum are all except. Anterior relation of the duodenum are all except. Among these options, superior mesenteric vessel, root of mesentery, and the jejunal coils are related, but gallbladder is not related. That's why C is the answer over here. That's why C is the answer over here. And here you can see that. Let me just show you this diagram, okay? And let me explain how to remember this. We have discussed the root of mesentery uh, in our class and we have seen that how this from point A, that is DJ flexure to the ileocecal junction, this root of mesentery will be going and what are the structures will be crossed by the root of mesentery, right? So behind this part, we have the third part of the duodenum or the horizontal part of the duodenum, okay? All the posterior relations of the duodenum in the third part will be same as that of the uh, structures crossed by the root of uh, mesentery. And, uh, and here you can see additional one will be there that is inferior mesenteric artery. Additional one will be there that is inferior mesenteric artery. Okay. And here you can say, if at all you consider over here that if this is, okay, the first part, second part, if you just consider over here, the first part, second part of the duodenum. And inside this part, if I can draw, this is the pancreas part, okay? Pancreas uncinate process is behind these vessels, okay? Look at this part. So, uncinate process, we have superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein. Ye uncinate process ke anterior, hai. they are anterior to the uncinate process. But they are behind the neck of pancreas. But they are behind the neck of pancreas, right? So here you can say that this is uh, the splenic vein coming, right? And uh, if you take this way, like this is this is the splenic vein coming behind. 
but uh, superior mesenteric artery and superior mesenteric vein are anterior to ancillary process behind the body of the pancreas part and behind the neck of pancreas we have the formation of portal vein behind the neck of pancreas we have the formation of portal vein okay so here you can say that we have a root of mesentery which is related anterior to the duodenum and then uh, in this part you can also see that superior mesenteric artery obviously which are approaching the ancillary process so they will first be related to the third part of the duodenum and coils of the jejunum are also related over here okay but regarding the fourth choice which was there that gold bladder it is not related to the third part of the duodenum it is actually related to the second part of the duodenum okay so this is the second part of the duodenum which is related to the gold bladder right uh, now the next question this most lateral column in the floor of the fourth ventricle in the floor of the fourth ventricle what is the most lateral uh, column here right so these options were given and we need to know like what are these columns we have discussed these functional columns of the cranial nerve nuclei in our class i have given you one single line meaning also for all the columns and the easy way to remember and we have also made the table if you remember where we have written that all the afferent columns right afferent column a4 afferent a4 lr plate so all the afferent column they come from lr plate and we know that uh, the efferent column will come from the basal plate right let me just show you that how this develop so during the development of the neural tube we have one sulcus which is called as sulcus limitans which is called as sulcus limitans on one side we have alar plate and on the other side we have basal plate on one side alar plate is there on the other side basal plate is there so uh, alar plate is towards the dorsal aspect and the basal plate is towards the ventral aspect initially right this is happening in the neural tube part but when this development will take place around the floor of the fourth along the fourth ventricle what will happen to accommodate at the level of the medulla accommodating the fourth ventricle this tube will open up just like the opening of the pages of the book so what was dorsal will be shifted here to the lateral aspect so the lr plate was present over here which has shifted to the lateral aspect so basically our motor nuclei will be medial m4 motor m4 medial also you can remember and the laterally will be going the sensory part okay so this is how we have all the uh, sensory nuclei in the lateral aspect and all the motor nuclei in the medial aspect okay and also one very important thing that next to the sulcus we have already seen the sulcus was there right next to the sulcus in both side like this is the sulcus limitans next to the sulcus there will be presence of the visceral column so visceral column will be present here from the efferent aspect also there will be the efferent visceral and afferent visceral both visceral will be present next to the sulcus this is how they are arranged let me show you how this sulca uh, how these structures are arranged now you see this is the sulcus limitans part okay this is the afferent part which is coming from the alar plate and this is the efferent part which is coming from the basal plate over here okay and next to the sulcus both side we have visceral columns so this side we have the efferent side the gve this side we have afferent sva and gva okay but towards the lateral most aspect we have ssa column and we do not have any counterpart of ssa in the efferent columns right so ssa will be the answer to this question dear students right ssa will be the answer most lateral column now the next question was regarding auditory pathway so they uh, i came to know that there were two questions right related to this auditory pathway so auditory pathway to remember auditory pathway we can uh, uh, remember one mnemonic over here that is uh, uh, some students they have already you have, must have remembered this e coli ma type uh, one uh, mnemonic is there given right so that you can follow if you are already uh, comfortable with that mnemonic otherwise you can also use this that is spiral c t slim 41 42 what is this spiral ct slim 41 42 so first of all we have the spiral organ of cordae spiral organ of cordae okay let me just show you this pathway 
So this is the mnemonic spiral CT slim 41, 42. We can see this pathway over here. First of all, we have spiral organ of corti, right, which will be receiving the input from here. Then we have the spiral ganglion. And then we have C means this cochlear nucleus. This is C for cochlear nucleus. T is for trapezoid body. Now, what is trapezoid body? See, we need to understand the fibers which are approaching the pontine part over here. These fibers from the left side, they will decussate to the right side and vice versa. So the crossing of the fibers from the left to right and right to le left, it will create one body which is called as trapezoid body. Okay. And uh, after that, we have superior olivary complex or superior olivary nucleus. Then we have this is the lateral lemniscus. Okay. And with the help of lateral lemniscus, they will reach the inferior colliculus and finally, to the medial geniculate body. So the mnemonic is spiral CT slim. And because at the trapezoid body, the decussation has taken place, that's why we have shifted our pathway from this side to this side. I hope that is making sense. And finally, from the medial geniculate body, via the auditory radiation, the fibers will reach primary auditory area, that is area number 41, 42. So even though our mnemonic says slim 41, 42, I totally understand that slim word doesn't go along with the 41, 42. Just kidding. Uh, 4142 is the area number, right? And uh, uh, that was all, dear students. All the very best. Okay. And if you find any uh, like change you want me to do in any options or in the language of the question, please let me know. Okay. Thank you so much, everyone. Take care. All the very best.